Hey guys, uh, thanks for coming back. I have a uh, sort of review type video for you today. I'm going to be doing uh, some of my favorite pencils, uh, some jelly roll pens that I love in different styles, um, some black ink pens, and the pen I got from Daiso, my aqua brush, and some micron pens. I do first want to show you that I keep them in these pencil cases that are easy to travel. They're plastic with a button. They come in different colors. Um, they sell them in different places. I got these at the local art store I'm not really sure where um, where else they may have them but they do have them in a lot of places where you can buy pens and stationery so I really like these um, and this is just like a syringe for watercolor it helps to draw out water and <clears throat> Here's another pen um, I use. I have three mechanical pens. One's just regular lead and one has blue lead and other has red lead and that's why I have it color coded there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just uh, do some sample writing um, on the sheet underneath these. Um, if I can get them arranged here, thank you. Um, I'm gonna put um, just the name of them or just a little writing um, in here just so you can get a sample of the way they write. Um, most of my pencils are gonna be in 0.5 millimeter. Sometimes I also use seven millimeter, um, 0.7 millimeter. And these are just the fine line type things. Um, this pencil I really like because it has a super long eraser and it is replaceable. Um, it's it, The eraser just seems to last a really long time because of the long eraser that you can put in it. And then it's a push down to get the lead out, which is kind of convenient for me. Also, it has a good girth, a good width to it with a rubber grip. Um, I just find this pencil really comfortable, so I've stuck with this brand, and it's it's called a Twist Erase. And you can't see it on the pencil probably because it's rubbed off for quite a while, but I have two of these, uh, one I keep at home and one I travel with. Um, and this is the other one. It is a Clickster Grip. It also has a comfort grip that I like. The only thing I don't like is this really short um, eraser. It's a little longer than that. It's been worn down, but it's still a shorter eraser than the other one. But I like to have multiple pencils, especially ones that are like this color, the clear color I like. Um, blue is my favorite color, so I like this clear blue. Um, so I keep my blue lead in there. And I have a heavy hand, so for 0.5, millimeter lead this lead is kind of brittle for me it breaks off a lot so i might upgrade to a 0.7 millimeter lead but for now i just kind of have to use it really lightly and like try not to press down so hard um just for me it probably works fine for anybody else with a light hand and so we got the same thing going on with the red clickster i have red lead in this one still 0.5 millimeter lead um, I don't use this one as often. I'm not as big a fan as, of red lead as I am blue lead. Uh, it's just a personal preference. I think a lot of people do like red lead uh, for getting warmer tones mixed in with their work. If, they, if the lead does end up showing up in the final work somehow. Um, I personally like cooler tones in my work, so I like the blue lead more. But I like to have both just in case I change my mind or just in case I find something else I want to use it for. Um, but it does have the little push lead button on the grip so that's kind of handy you know it's just right there for you to click when you need more lead i like it there also but if i could get those two pencils combined somehow that would be perfect but for now um i use these two for that reason uh, just to have the different color coding and because the style of them and you know how they're made um the only thing i would chase change about those clickster ones is have a longer eraser because it's definitely not much of an eraser i will add also that the clip those blue leads and red leads don't erase very well it could be just the brand of lead i'm using but they don't erase that well um so now getting started with the jelly rolls this is my favorite 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 jelly roll pen it's the hot pink jelly roll i go through so many of these I use these for hot pink accents. Um, I use a lot of pink in my work, so this adds a lot of highlight to the pinks that I use, and it just adds a pop of pop <laughs> to me. It adds a really good pop of color to the work that I am using. Uh, this one I borrowed from Mari, my boyfriend. This is actually his pen, but it's a darker pink that I was trying out. Um, these particular jelly rolls are the regular opaque jelly rolls um most of them will be able to write on dark paper 
um, I can add a dark paper tutorial or a dark paper demo for you if you like at the end um, for now I just use this white paper um, the third the third pink there is kind of like a darker pink but it's more like a, an ink um, see the difference here is the the lighter or the darker the pink there with the moon and star on it that's a symbol on the jelly rolls they the jelly rolls have different symbols for different things like this one doesn't have a symbol but you can tell that it's uh, metallic because of the pin cap um, but on the other one you saw a star so the star means that or the moon star means that it writes on dark paper so you can use dark surfaces like dark paper to write on it and it'll still show up the other ones like the other pink the darker pink there the third one that will not write on it'll write on dark paper but you won't be able to see it it's not opaque it doesn't keep its color against the dark background see the difference between these two see the moon is the writing on dark paper and these little series of stars is a shadow it means shadow so this is actually a green gold pen and a silver blue pen so it has a silver shadow in the blue and the green has a gold shadow but i've noticed that these pens completely change for me usually when i'm using them um the green will completely turn gold and the blue will completely turn silver and it's actually a darker pigmented um opaque silver and an opaque gold it shows up a lot better on dark paper than using the gold metallic gel pens see the, the metallic gel pens right above the green there so it shows up it's metallic but it's a lot more clear and the green is more opaque so when it turns gold you can actually see the gold more and, and this is just the I'm sorry I didn't get that in the shot there so this one has a star burst like a comet star burst and that is let's see what is that I believe that's just a glitter it just means that's a glitter pen so that's a blue glitter jelly roll and um, I believe that one still does show up on dark paper I don't know I'm gonna have to do a dark paper test for you to see this exactly and here is a purple version of the same line with a star burst symbol this is a purple glitter gel pen sorry about my spelling in some of these I was just kind of in the moment and I probably misspelled a few things in here <laughs> but you know I'm just trying to give you the gist of what these pens look like when you write with them this one is also the clear glitter you probably won't see this one as well i'll try to bring it closer later but this is clear clear gel glitter so if you just want a pop of glitter you can like roll this onto something and it'll just give it a glitter you can roll it a lot of these i combine so you can combine these with other colors as long as they're dry um, otherwise you might mix a little might be the mixing might go as well but I use watercolor a lot so if I need a sparkle in something I can just add this clear glitter sparkle pen to it and it'll give it a nice sparkle all right right after that we have the yellow the yellow is super super bright I also use this one because it is opaque on dark backgrounds not as opaque as some of the other colors like the pink but it does have a good opaqueness pigment to it so um i'll probably use it maybe a couple of passes over a dark surface just to get, make sure it has enough brightness to it but um the yellow is really good for highlights also and, and pops of yellow and um, this is a regular purple jelly roll so this one is not a dark surface jelly roll so this one probably would not show up on dark surface this one is another metallic pen and this is black metallic so it kind of comes out looking a little gun smoky gun metal gray kind of it's not super black but it does have like a metallic shimmer to it so kind of comes out looking kind of like a gun metal gun metal gray Alright, next up for you I have the 
Pentel pocket brush pen. This is a very, very popular brush pen for traveling and um, for taking on the go and drawing in ink. It has um, a brush tip uh, and it comes with refillable ink cartridges. So it makes it perfect for like keeping the brush for a long time and just spending a few bucks on the replacements. The replacement usually comes in uh, a two pack. So when you buy a pack, you get two of these um, ink cartridges. That is one of my favorite pens to draw with. Um, the next one is the first one I actually got, and this is the Pentel Color Brush. And it's almost the same thing, except it's a little bigger. It carries, I think, a little bit more of a ink reservoir, and um, it comes in uh, different sizes also. Uh, you don't actually have to use ink with this cart with this um, kind of pen. They have like. Um, like an empty reservoir where you can put other kind of colors you can put a little bit of water in it so it's like more of a gray you can mix it with this aqua brush to get a gray um, but there are other colors that you can use uh, that you can fill up with other colors of ink and mix with other colors of ink so you don't just have to use black gray Alright, so right now, um, I wanted to show you the aqua, the aqua brush, just with the plain water aqua brush. Um, these are also really popular with watercolors um, for on the go, because you can take the water and the brush with you. Uh, travel, it doesn't leak, it's a very reliable. Uh, and so here I'm just using a, a watercolor pencil, because I didn't have my palette that this day. Um, so I had to use a watercolor pencil which is just as fine it's still going to dissolve with the, the aqua brush plus also i can write with it like this um so this is a blue pencil and then you just take your aqua brush squeeze the water out a little so the bristles get wet and then you just go to town with the watercolor there um now normally i would use this with just um a watercolor palette and pick up the pigment and paint as usual and like I said, this is good for traveling. For me, it's not really a good replacement for a regular brush and, and water. I do prefer having a home studio with lots of different brushes and um, clean water because you do have to refill the aqua brush quite often if you paint a lot. Um, the next one you see here is the pen I got from Daiso. I'm really starting to like this pen. It's a very small nib, the .38 and it's a really icy light blue which i like i'm actually going to go back and get some more of the colors but it was just a dollar fifty so that's like a really good price for a pen and um i took it apart and it actually has like a big ink reservoir i don't know how much ink is in it but it does have a window in it to show you how much ink has in it um this is also another really popular pen the micron pen um i have a zero two which i just wrote with and this is the zero five and these are just a smaller and a, a little bit larger and these come in a lot of different sizes also you'll probably find that a lot of artists like using the micron pens because they are archival and they are waterproof so especially with watercolors once you draw something you can paint over it just fine and it's um, super good for illustration and things like that so it doesn't bleed um, which is a big perk of those kinds of pens so here's a close-up of everything that I've written here I'm trying to show you a little bit of the glitter and the light there so you can just kind of see that a little better of course the camera really never does stuff like that justice um, but it is pretty cool to use. Um, these are the tools I use the most. Look, it's a bonus video. So I have some of these already written out for you. I tried these on the white paper and this is what they look on the dark paper. Um, the only one I don't, the only pen I don't have here is the white one, but I did write on the paper beforehand with the white. Um, the big difference you can see is the green gold and the metallic gold, and then the metallic blue and the silver blue you kind of see that the metallic pens have a little bit more clear ink in them so they don't show up as well on the dark surface but the green gold and the silver blue are pretty opaque and see them very well and they turn all the way green and all the way silver here you have the difference between moonlight purple and regular gel ink purple the moonlight series of pens is meant to draw on dark surfaces so you can see it a lot better now because the um paper is not full black it's actually a slate gray color um the 
regular gel ink purple is still gonna show up a little bit because it's pretty dark ink already so it still kind of shows up dark on the paper but still not meant to be drawn it's kind of phasing a little bit you probably wouldn't really want to use it on a dark surface unless you're needing a, a small a subtle dark accent somewhere on a paper this color um, but that's the difference between the two purples and the two series of purples. This is another regular gel ink red. And this does not show up very well on dark surfaces. It's not meant to. Um, it actually kind of just fades in. Um, on the white paper, however, it's very opaque. So it's a really good dark opaque red for white paper, but not a dark paper. And there you go, you can see it um, close up there. And now we're going to try the Moonlight Green. This is going to be um, made for dark paper. I'm running out of room on my little card here. Right, and this one is actually probably my favorite. Like I said, blue is my favorite color. So this is the Moonlight Blue. This looks really good, uh, like the Moonlight Purple on the dark paper. So there you go with the little symbol there. Right now on to the last pens we have. This is the clear glitter. I tried this one on the white paper, so I'll show you what it looks like on the dark paper. Um, still pretty clear, but the glitter I guess shows up a little bit more on the dark paper. And I'm just gonna write clear gel ink here. Clear glitter. It's a pretty glittery pen. This has a lot of sparkle to work um, and I have two different shades of blue glitter this is I believe a light lighter blue and the other one's a darker blue and the last one is a purple glitter All right, that's pretty much it for the gel pens. Um, before I leave though, I did want to show you one of my new favorite pencils that I use more often now. It's actually a, a lead holder for two millimeter lead. It's one of my favorite pencils um, because it's a lot bigger than a regular mechanical pencil. Like I said, I have a heavy hand, so it actually um, doesn't break. I don't think it's broken on me one time yet. Um, and you get a lot of different kind of shading techniques with a bigger lead.
And here is the um, regular mechanical pencil, the 0 0.5 millimeter versus the uh, 2 millimeter. You can see the size difference there. So as you can see, these kinds of pens are great for writing on uh, different colored papers, especially the dark papers, but I mainly use them to do highlights and cool effects um, that I can't get with my watercolors or other kind of pens. So here I'm going to show you some of the artwork that I create with the, the gel pens that I use, metallics and glitter types mixed with some watercolor and some iridescent watercolor. So I hope you like this video. Um, check out my website, johnnyprezart.com. Subscribe if you like what you see and see you later.